What you guys got another video here for you. Should you overclock a GPU and is it worth it in 2020? This is a debate that will run and run. People will always overclock hardware. Some people like to say it's worth doing and some people will say it's not worth doing. Today we're talking about overclocking GPUs. What do you think? Well, let's take a look at the pros and the cons. What can you expect to get from overclocking a GPU? Well, it's going to depend on what type of GPU you've got and how far you can push that GPU. All GPUs are going to be different. No GPU is the same. And some people will be able to overclock theirs more than what you can overclock yours. So what sort of performance boosts can you expect to get out of overclocking a GPU? Well, probably anything between 5 and 20 frames, I would have thought. No more than that. That's 5 and 20 frames per second. And that's the reason why people overclock. Is it worth it? In my opinion, it's probably not worth overclocking. If you're really looking to get more performance out of a GPU, then go and buy a better GPU. <laughs> it's that simple. But if you are looking to get more performance out of your GPU, then overclocking is the way to go. But what risks are involved with overclocking? Well, you're going to get some people that say there is no risk if you're just pushing the core clock up and also you may have to add a power limit up and also you may have to add a little bit more uh, temp limit as well. So you might have to boost those right up and then you can play with the core clock first and see how far you can go with it. Some people might be able to get, you know, 80. Or some people might be able to get 100 megahertz. It just depends. Uh, some people can get even more than that. It just depends on the GPU. Now, if you start adding... Uh, more voltage you can unlock the voltage control the voltage monitoring and constant uh, voltage here you can add those in and start playing with those do these at your own risk because this will also uh, shorten the life of your hardware so bear in mind that when you start putting more voltage through it can risk shortening the life of that gpu and also damage the gpu what will happen if you start pushing that core clock up too high more than what that GPU can handle. You'll start getting artifacts on the screen and start to get all sort of weird stuff happening. And that means it's an unstable overclock and it's not working for you. You need to down the clock speed and make sure it runs uh, perfectly smooth. So is it worth doing? In my opinion, no, it's not. This is a 1080p monitor, 144 hertz with a Ryzen processor with a 1660 Super. You can see it's buttery smooth and there will be no reason to overclock this GPU in my personal opinion. You can play all the games you want and you can have really good frame rates and it's nice and smooth as you can see here. So it may be it's coming down to what type of system you've got. Maybe you've got an old Dell Optiplex system and uh, you've put in a 1070 Ti or something like that and you're now trying to eke out more frames per second. Maybe you're getting stuttering and freezing well, that'll be down to the computer that you're running because it's 10 years old and you're trying to run more modern architecture on it. So what is the bare minimum of frames per second you would need to have an enjoyable experience playing games online? And I would say with over the years, these are probably the default bare minimum specs you would need. A 1080p 60 hertz monitor with 60 frames per second consistently and a good internet connection. If you have got a GPU that delivers 60 frames per second, but then keeps dropping down to 40 and, and 55, then it's not good enough. You need to have a consistent 60 frames per second uh, or higher, and you should be okay. So there are probably the bare minimum specs. Now, the reason why you would need those is because you'll be at a massive disadvantage if you start playing at lower specs. Now, you can get more frames per second by uh, reducing some of the main key features like anti-aliasing and also other types of settings like shadows and things like that. That can add more frames per second. So you don't need to just go out and overclock your graphics card. Now, if you've already got a graphics card and you're in the realms of 40 frames per second, then obviously I wouldn't advise you go and overclock because that means your uh, graphics card is already of a very low quality. So you would really sort of need to start thinking about upgrading at that stage. Now, another problem I see people doing is buying 
144 hertz monitors or 240 hertz monitors or 2K or 4K monitors and then having a low end graphics card to try and drive uh, that monitor and it's really going to cause you a lot of problems and really hinder your frames per second so you're better off to come down to 1080p gaming it's no good downscaling the resolution to 1080p because it will look all blown out and horrible you're better off to get a 1080p monitor and play at that lower resolution and you will get better frames per second so just to be clear i do not recommend you overclock your gpu but if you are one of those people that like to do it then just make sure that you do it in small increments and don't push the graphics card too hard and if you are starting to push voltage through that gpu then make sure you stay within the safety uh, levels of that gpu otherwise you will shorten the life of that gpu if you start to see artifacting or any sort of lines or colors on the screen you are pushing that gpu uh, too far and you're going to end up damaging or uh, blowing your gpu so be very very careful anyway i think that's going to be about it for this video so my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video helped you out, guys. Remember, if you always need more help or any sort of questions like that, you can always pop on our Discord server and there'll be people on there that are quite happy to help you and give you some advice. These people are fully qualified technicians and work in the PC repair industry, so they do know what they're talking about. You're also going to see a lot of people on the internet that are giving you sort of misleading information which can damage your hardware. So just be a bit careful when you're messing with that sort of stuff. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.